How does an indie game from 2011 become one of the best dungeon-crawling, roguelike RPGs of all time? Well, elementary, my dear Watson. Quality! Dungeons of Dreadmore is just a fantastic game with an unlimited amount of replay value, and I mean that in the most literal sense of the word. I must have rolled a new character at least 100 times in this game over the course of the dozens of hours I have played it. You see, Dungeons of Dreadmore is a game that knows it gets hard and it gets hard quick. It's a game that relies on both skill and luck. Luck being sometimes you walk into places where there's just no chance of surviving. Like, you step on a tile and then you just lose like 60% of your life right away from some poisonous gas. And as you continue to walk, you lose the other 40% of your life. You can go from being a cocky and powerful warrior who has left 50 dead foes in his tracks to stepping on a trap and just dying within a few seconds. Now while this might sound frustrating, the gameplay is so much fun that the hard chance nature never really gets to your head. For example, I did two playthroughs to record footage for this review. The first playthrough, I created a pure magic user. All my skills were about gaining mana really fast and using really powerful fire attacks. I was able to take out enemies from far away and I felt untouchable. Until I got cocky, thought I gained enough good equipment and levels to progress to the next level of the dungeon. I was wrong. I stepped in a trap that killed me almost instantly. But it's not just traps that kill you. Sometimes you just walk into a room where there's like a ton of monsters that will just completely destroy you if you don't just run for your life. So dying unexpectedly, I could see how someone could be a little flustered. But all I thought the second my character died was, okay, now I'm gonna roll a character that's completely different and play the game as a vampire who's really good at melee combat with weapons. And that's what I did. You see, the fun of the game is replaying the game with different types of character archetypes. And you can have a ton of different character archetypes. Dungeons of Dreadmore is a game that leaves who you are completely in your hands. It is possibly the most customizable roguelike game I've ever had the pleasure of playing. There are so many different perks and ways you can make your character that it's overwhelming at first. I mean, I've been playing this game on and off for almost two years now, and I still haven't played every type of character archetype you can have, simply because there really is no character archetype. You can be a mixture of a ton of different classes all in one. Some of them play on each other's strengths, and some traits actually don't help each other out at all and actually hurt you if you mix them together. Customizing the type of character you have is just a small portion of how deep this game is. There is hundreds of spells, hundreds of different items and weapons and treasures you pick up. Tons of different enemies to kill. You can craft your own items if you're not happy with the things you find in the dungeons. Hell, you can even play as a man and a woman, both of whom have really big, bushy, giant eyebrows. It's weird. They have the eyebrows of elderly Greek men. The gameplay, well, it's a roguelike game. I'm sure if you're subscribed to me, you have a good idea of what game genres are like. I don't think I have many subscribers that don't know video games. You walk around dungeons and everything is turn-based from movement to combat. That is to say, once you move, the enemy moves. If you stand still, the enemy stands still. It's basically turn-based combat, but in a really fun, interactive way that never feels like turn-based combat. It's like a chess game, but you're always on the brink of defeat, so you do have to think fast no matter what. Dungeons of Dreadmore is ultimately a game with unlimited customization, unlimited replayability. For how much it costs, I think it's around 5 bucks on Steam, it is just a perfect deal in terms of gaming. I could see myself playing this game on and off for 
decades to come. I, I'm totally serious here. Obviously, I'm not going to play it religiously like every single week, but maybe once or twice a year, I'll have a Dungeons of Dreadmore binge. If you're a fan of roguelike RPGs, this is not a game you will ever be bored with. And on top of this never-ending replayability, they made like three expansions for the game. Dungeons of Dreadmore is just a great game, and on top of that, a great value for your buck. It gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.